Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Cappuccino with Amber. It's just going to be me and Kelly today. Hey guys. We're going to throw it back a little bit, make it a little bit more casual as you can see the way we're dressed. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, again, I'm the Guru and this is my co-host, Kelly. So you have to have heard about Taylor Swift and Tom Hiddleston, right? Oh yes, both of them are, it's crazy, you know? Right? I they, would never have guessed they would then like end up together. I know, right? And just two weeks after she broke up with Calvin Harris. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. The two of them were recently spotted together in Sussex. They were holding hands, looking so cute and cozy. Wasn't, weren't they with the mom of Tom? Yeah, they were. They were with Tom's mother, which is so weird because a Apparently, Taylor never met Calvin's parents. Huh. They dated for 15 months and she never met his parents. Maybe this could be something real this time, huh? I guess so. I hope it is. They seem so cute. They do look really cute in the pictures and they were holding hands and they seemed really inseparable. I mean, it was such a cute scene. I know, right? And it's only been two weeks since they were dating. And I know. they look so close already. So crazy. Yeah. So speaking of famous people, I'm sure you've heard of Messi. Oh, yeah. What's going on with him, you know? Oh, yeah. The last game with Argentina versus Chile, and that didn't really end up so good for Messi or Argentina, the team. So, you know, Messi missed his penalty kick, I and know. he was so emotional about that. They everyone ended up losing. Was. Yeah, everyone was. Yeah. The whole team was. He went, and when the game was done, he went to sit on the other side of the bench. And, yeah. you know, he told all of Argentina, he told everybody, you know, I'm done. I'm not playing any nationals anymore. Nothing like that. And I was told by somebody that they're actually all over Argentina. They have signs that say, don't leave, you know. He's just as famous. He's super famous in Argentina. And he's the best soccer player in the world, you know. Right. So, or renowned as. People, yes. You know, it's debatable, but he's just a really famous soccer player. And it's just crazy what's going on. But I'm rooting for him to come back. I mean, he's only 29 years old. Me so too. we'll see what happens. He has to come back. So Guru, you struck me as the kind of guy that likes a good workout. Yeah, I, I do. Yeah, I think we all do. Working out and just being healthy is a big deal right now. Well, did you know that there's about six steps that you can do to make sure that your workout is not only enjoyable for yourself, but actually effective? Oh really, I'd like to hear about it. Yeah, so one of the first steps is Make your, make your workout enjoyable. Don't make it like into deadlines. Don't make it into you have to reach a certain goal at a certain point. Just have fun with it. Oh yeah, I mean, I love working out. I like having fun. And if yeah. you're not having fun while working out, I don't really see the point. Exactly. Other than health. Right. But, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but are yeah. you really healthy if you're, you know, working out, but you're so serious and you're so upset because you're yeah, not doing exactly. that goal? Yeah, exactly. You know, I'm the type of guy that likes and just enjoys a good workout, right? Yeah. And I mean, I think another one of the points was that Make it social, right? Yeah. Work out with friends, have a workout partner with you, keep you accountable, mm -hmm. you know? Exactly, and that's another way to help keep it fun because if you're with people, if you're having fun with people that you like and enjoy their company, you're, you yourself are gonna have so much more fun working out. Yeah, and you have more motivation. I mean, I could say that from personal experience. Yeah. I always work harder when I have someone else there. Keep me going, keep yeah. me up to, you know, up to speed, you know, push you. Exactly. You know, that's what works for me at least. Yeah, another really big point is do not spend a lot of money. Because if you're gonna spend a lot of money, you're gonna feel guilty if you don't go like if you spend like a hundred dollars a month for a gym subs you know, gym subscription and you don't make it that month or you don't make it you know however many days that you said you would you're gonna feel guilty and you're gonna feel disappointed and you're gonna push yourself harder and so that kind of almost defeats the purpose of working out yeah you know uh, back whenever I was in a really good shape I mean I didn't have a gym subscription or anything mm -hmm. I had an in-house gym and yeah. that was free you know um after you know paying for everything else at first. But yeah. even before that, I would work off of body weight stuff, mm -hmm. you know, push-ups, sit-ups. And I was in the best shape of my life. Exactly. I felt good, you know, I wasn't straining anything, I wasn't hurting myself, mm -hmm. and I was just enjoying myself without the extra pressure of, okay, I need to make sure that I get my money's worth $100 a month. Exactly. Exactly. Another really big thing is to kind of go back to your childhood roots. If you enjoyed like, you know, jump roping or hula hooping when you were a kid, that's a really good thing to pick up even nowadays because those are, you're going to have fun with it. It's, it all just comes back to having fun. Really. Oh yeah, that's right. Jump roping. I actually had to add that into my workout whenever I started doing powerlifting and just combat exercises and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Because jump roping, hula hooping, it's a great core exercise. One, yeah. hula hooping is. And uh, jump roping, that's a really, really good cardio exercise and coordination. Yeah. So just simple stuff like that that you wouldn't even think that is a really good workout. You really should put in your workout. Another really important thing about working out is valuing doing little bits of work that workouts 
over a longer period of time. Instead of trying to work out for like three hours every single day, it's a lot better to work out maybe for like 30 to 45 minutes a couple days. That way you're gonna you're gonna maximize the, you know, you're gonna maximize your effort at your workout, but you're also not gonna be straining yourself trying to get a workout in every single day. Yeah, you're totally right about that. I mean, me myself, I've hurt myself by working yeah. out too much and too hard and too intense exactly. at a long period of time. Your body is just not used to that. And a really, really smart man who um, used to tell me how to work out and give me tips and stuff mm -hmm. is that working out is not how you build muscle or get in shape. It's actually the repairing and the resting phase that you actually exactly. get better. You know, and uh, don't think that you're gonna be able to reach that goal in a week yeah. or two weeks. It's it's a lifestyle. It you is. gotta you gotta keep on going 45 an hour a day at most and just keep on going it. You just don't wanna burn yourself out. You don't wanna go three hours one day and then you just are dead the next three days and keep doing that repetitively because that just won't do it. Yeah, which that that actually leads to the last point, which is the mo probably one of the most important ones, and that's just taking time for yourself. If you're spending every single day working out, you need a rest, you need a break. So taking some time, just doing things that you know are joy enjoyable for you, if that's Netflix and chill, reading a book, <laughs> maybe just going shopping, if, you know, that way you're still walking, you're still getting a little bit of a workout, but you're not pushing yourself so hard. That's what's really important is taking that time to rest and mm -hmm. giving yourself a mental break as well as a physical break. Yeah, I used to be that guy. I mean, I still am sometimes. I mean, I strained my tricep, I strained my back. I mean, I just worked out too much. I just, I mean, my mom had to tell me, Tyler, you know, you're working out too much, your body is not resting enough, and it's just detrimental to your body at a certain point. If you work out too much, don't give yourself enough time to do other things, mm -hmm. rest up, you know, um, just make sure that your body's in the right shape. Yeah. Right? You can work out so much that it's unhealthy and you don't want to do that, you start hurting yourself. So yeah, um, those are a lot of good tips. Is there really anything else? No, I mean, really, it just all boils down to just have fun. Just, you know, make it enjoyable for yourself. Make it something that you're going to want to do and it's not a chore. But also give yourself that break. Give yourself that chance to relax and do something that isn't working out. Yeah, I agree. I love working out, but take these tips, take it to heart, and make sure you get that summer body that you want. You know, Kelly, we just talked about how exercising and how to work out and all that yeah. good stuff, you know, around that. But it's really important also, if you want that really good summer body, that you eat right. Yes. Yes. So um, there was actually a recent study by a guy. Have you ever heard of this study about diabetes? And... I have. I think his name is Dr. Andrew Whale. Yes, Dr. Andrew Whale. So what he did is he actually found a way to reverse his type 2 diabetes. Okay. And he said that it was just all in the diet. Mm -hmm. Right? He lost 22 pounds in a matter of weeks. Wow, that's yes. crazy. That is crazy. And it's just what you eat, how you eat it, and it's just a misconception nowadays about what's good for you, what's not good for you, what you can't eat and what you can't eat. And Kelly, you've been on diets before, right? Oh, yeah. You've heard of the low-fat diet and oh, stuff yeah. like that. And actually, low-fat low fat diets are not good for you. Mm -hmm. It's um, And that's also from what I've researched personally. I am on a high-fat, high-protein diet, and that keeps lean lean weight. If I want to gain lean weight, that's what I do. Mm -hmm. But so it's really important to note too that there are such things as, you know, good fats and bad fats. That is right. So good fats are things like omega-3 fatty acids, which you can find in fish mm -hmm. um, and lots of, you know, shellfish products, because what that does is your body knows how to work with that. Your body knows how to digest those, those fatty acids. But, you know, fats in like your fried chicken, fried food in general. Your body has no idea what to do with Right, that. and speaking of good fats and bad fats, you got good carbs and bad carbs as well. Exactly. You got the ones on um, like the complex carbs, and then mm -hmm. you got the super simple carbs like sugar. You got sugar, your body just takes that as direct energy. It can be good at sometimes, but most of the time that's not good for you because your body just, if your body doesn't burn all that, it'll store it automatically as fat. Mm -hmm. You got the complex carbs, which would be oats, multi-grain stuff, you know, yeah. whole grain stuff. Your body, takes time to digest that and that's what your body's used to and that's why fats and protein and complex carbs are good for you because your body takes time to digest that and um, the energy is not used all at once. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And since we did just talk about exercise, it's really important to note that the same study said, while exercise is good for you, it's not the best way, or the only way, I should say, to lose weight. You still have to diet. You still have to pay attention to what you're putting into your body, as mm -hmm. well as what you're doing with your body. That's right. Um, I actually read into it, and for a muffin, if you just eat a simple muffin, it takes about 
four miles mm -hmm. to burn that off. Yeah. So a lot of times people actually underestimate the amount of exercise versus the amount of calorie they intake. Yeah. Because, okay, some people are like, oh, um, I just exercised really hard or I just had a really good workout. And then they eat 500 calories, 200 calories, 300 calories, and they overestimate the amount of calories that they burn. So now they actually in took more calories than they burned. So now they're gaining weight. Yeah. And that's kind of where the weight gain happens. And you're looking at the scale. I've been working for working out for three, four weeks a month. Mm -hmm. And why am I gaining weight? Yeah. You know, and exactly. that's why. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, also just make sure that, you know, it's in the summer now. And like I said before, if you're trying to reach that summer body, you got to work out, work out right, work out enjoyably, but also eat right. You know, don't, you know, don't beat yourself up about it. Don't just. <laughs> Don't beat yourself up about it, but you know, give yourself a break, both when you're exercising, but also when you're eating. You know, if you're craving, if you're craving some sugar, if you're craving ice cream, eat some ice cream. Limit yourself. Moderate exactly. yourself. It's all in moderation. Exactly. And yeah, thank you. I just yes. had a lost word there. But <laughs> yeah, exactly what Kelly just said. Do everything in good moderation. Just set your goals and make sure you achieve them. You know, speaking of all of this health food and working out, you know, we did just say that if you, you know, have a new sugar craving, you should definitely take it. Have you heard anything recently about removing fat from chocolate? Doesn't that have something to do with like electrocuting chocolate or something like that? So, yeah, exactly. So the, some doctors have discovered that, you know, chocolate has a lot, to, in order to make chocolate, you have to use a lot of fat and a lot of fatty products to create it. Mm -hmm. But they found if they run liquefied chocolate or liquefied cocoa over like an electric current, it's some, it, somehow removes about 10% of the fat. 10%, wow. Yeah, so that's, I mean, that's a significant amount. So research has shown that removing that amount of fat somehow actually makes it more enjoyable. It actually makes the chocolate taste better. Yeah, you know, um, some of the people who actually were tasting it, some of the people part who partook in the experiment and all that good stuff, they tasted it and they said, okay, either one, they didn't taste the difference. It, a lot of people actually said, like you said, it tasted better. Yeah. And so that's pretty crazy that you can actually lower the amount of fat and actually make it taste better. So, I mean, I'm really curious to see when this actually comes out to the public. Yeah. And infused into the products such as Mars, because Mars is actually funding it. Mm -hmm. with, um, which is really cool because Mars chocolate bars, you know, right. not trying to advertise for them, but they they taste pretty good. Those so are my, those are my weakness. So yeah. if you can make them where I'm not gonna gain extra weight, oh my gosh, that'd be amazing. Exactly, a lower amount of calories for a sweet tooth, you know. Yeah. But yeah, um, let's just see when they come out, and I'm really curious to try them. I'm so excited. Electrocuted chocolate. Electrocuted chocolates. So lower weird. Fat. Yeah. <laughs> You know, we're all talking about eating right, working out, and all that good stuff, but at the end of the day, what we're trying to achieve is to look better, right? Yeah. Look good. Beach body, make sure that you look appealing to the right. opposite sex and all Without that Without an Instagram filter. Yes, that's right. <laughs> now, you know, all that's good. You know, everybody takes selfies, and or most people take selfies, you know? Mm -hmm. Kim Kardashian, oh, yeah. big selfie taker. But doctors are actually finding out that your phone releases a sort of radiation that actually wrinkles your skin. What? Yes. And doctors can actually, some doctors can actually tell which side you use your phone. So if you put your phone on the right side, you're, there's actually traces of wrinkliness and um, dark darkness in your skin. Wow. I mean, I can always tell which side of the phone I use because that's the side where my makeup is all smudged. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Now imagine that, but with your actual skin. Yes, oh, and they say, they say that moisturizers, over-the-counter stuff, you know, sunscreen and all that good stuff, you know, they relate it to sun radiation, but it's not actually sun radiation. Okay. So all that cannot protect you from that. Oh, my gosh. So it's pretty crazy. You better watch out, you know, your phone usage, selfie usage, and all that good stuff because that can actually damage your skin, and you don't want that. You want your face to look really nice. Yeah. You know? So make sure that uh, whenever you're taking selfies, be aware and moderate it. Use selfies in moderation, <laughs> just like working out, eating everything in moderation. I think that's the theme for today. Right. Everything in moderation. Everything in moderation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to jump ship here for a second because I have a really cool story to tell you about. All right, All right, so you've heard of Tesla and the cars, right? Oh, yeah, I love those cars. Electric, right? Yeah. Fully electric. 
fully electric. They're uh-huh. so cool. There's they run, oh, they run so smooth. They drive nice. I haven't drove one myself, but I, honestly, I really want one. Right? Oh my gosh. Well, so apparently, a Tesla car owner, by accident, found out that the car can not only just drive on dry land, but can also float as a boat. No way. Yes. Yes. I've honestly never heard of that. That's right? crazy. I know. So it's an electric car boat. Yeah, it's it's so crazy. But the co-founder of Tesla, Elon Musk, is saying that nobody else should try this. He does not recommend it because while it's a you know it's a pretty cool thing and it really amps up Tesla's just overall appeal, it is an electric car, and so oh, yeah. you know everything in there is electric, is electric, and so. Now he says that everything is completely sealed up, like all the components that you know make it run, all the components that keep the car, you know, in the shape that it is. Everything's completely sealed, but that doesn't mean that things can't happen. And so, you know, yeah, that me- makes sense. Right? Uh, you know, anything can always happen, especially when you're dealing with machinery and electricity exactly. like that. But you know, it makes sense because you don't have like the same engine and all mm-hmm. that good stuff. You don't have the same, um, you, you don't have the same gas intake. So you remove a lot of those unnecessary parts. Exactly. So it's a lighter car. Exactly. You know, but I am very curious as to how this guy found out. Did he just accidentally drive into a lake? Or... Uh, well, so where he was, there was a lot of like, so this wasn't in the United States. This was over, this was over in a European country. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and so he was driving through and it was actually in a tunnel and the tunnel had completely flooded. Hmm. And you know, cars are trying really hard to get through, and lots of people are getting stuck. And there he goes with the Tesla, right? Yeah, and, and he's just floating right past them. Yeah, just floats <laughs> right past them. It was completely hilarious. And so there's actually a video online that you guys can look at, and it's so cool. Wow, I'm, I really need to check that out. I know, but right? that just makes me want a Tesla even more. I know. It's a water car, and I think that's something that Tesla might be able to, or should, yes. you know, invest in doing because they might exactly. be able to make a hybrid boat car type deal, right? which. I think a lot of people with money would want. If you're watching Tesla, <laughs> yeah. If you're watching Tesla, pay attention. I've got some notes for you. All right. Well, yeah, we're looking forward to you know seeing what happens with this. What how people are going to oh, take yeah. the news? How Tesla's going to take that? Right. You know, see what happens with that. Definitely. So I'm going to go ahead and touch on a quite a sensitive topic here: gender roles. And so you'd be happy to hear that I'm not going to present my opinion. I'm just going to be presenting facts. So I'm sure you've read on some facts about gender roles and actually how they're dissipating. Yeah, I have actually. Yeah, so what kind of facts and what kind of numbers have you seen on that? Yeah, well, you know, I've, I've been reading that men on average work about about 8.2 hours in, the, in, an, in an office workspace, you know, about 8.2 hours a day, while women are working about 7.8. And, you know, that does seem like a big gap, but that's still pretty, you know, that's still pretty close that, you know, men and women are working around the same hours in an office space. Yeah, that makes sense. And also, even though men are more likely to spend their time sporting outdoors and doing stuff like that, you know, working out, exercising. Women are actually spending about 1.2 hours a day exercising, working out, while men are at 1.7. So you see that gap closing in. There is still a gap, but the gap is closing in. You know, one area where the gender roles still have quite a bit of distance, you know, a gap in between there is how women spend only an hour, or not only an hour, but women spend on average an hour with their kids while men spend what, around? It's about 25 minutes. Oh really? And what about food prepping? I know that's still also something where, you know, girls tend to do more of. Yeah, so as far as food prep goes, it's studies are showing that women are doing about 70% of food prep while men are doing only about 43%. Now, that a lot of that could be just women preparing food for themselves, or it could be women preparing food for a whole family. And guys, on average, we're not saying guys on average don't know how to cook, but you know, a lot of guys, a lot of guys don't know how to cook. A lot of girls don't know how to cook either, so that's a big thing. Yeah, I mean, my mom still cooks, you know, food for the family and all that good stuff. And my dad, he's the guy who you know works and gets the money for the house. So I feel like gender roles are still apparent in today's generation. Oh yeah. But I mean, there are times where my dad grills, you know, a steak or something like that, mm-hmm. or cooks for the family. There are times that I feel like gender roles are steadily decreasing. They are. You know, and I think studies show ever since. 2003 it has Mm -hmm. been decreasing a lot more it has it really has yeah I think a lot of y'all would be happy to hear that some of y'all might not be happy but hey that's just the facts right Mm -hmm. so that's all for today's episode of cappuccino with amber let us know how you feel about like the casual kind of talking facts and all that good stuff and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it I'm your host the guru I'm Kelly and we'll catch you next time Mm -hmm.